So we're here at the Paisley Pear in Brackley, which is the unlikely location for the launch of the latest supercharging hub from Osprey. And I'm here with Ian Johnston, who is, uh, well, I'd like you to introduce yourself. Of course, thank you. I'm Ian Johnston. I'm the uh, CEO of the Osprey Charging Network. So tell me about the uh, the supercharging hub and kind of what 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 how it fits into your program of development. Yeah, so this is the latest of a, a number of charging hubs that we're launching. I think we've got three more of these launching in the next few weeks. There's another 19 where we're building at the moment. So this is really an example of what is to come for the Osprey network going forward. Uh, it's significant for a few reasons. Uh, firstly, it's clearly a Marston site where we've had some 50 kilowatt chargers for a number of years, but this site shows us stepping up our relationship with Marstons, uh, as we are with many landlords now, to deliver these large charging hubs uh, with a number of high power chargers. I think secondly um, it's an important site because it's been recognised by ChargeSafe as the highest scoring site in the whole of the UK from an accessibility perspective and again here we're setting the standard for what we need to achieve on all sites going forward in terms of the space and accessibility that we're giving drivers of all abilities um, and also in terms of the, the way the hardware is integrated within the site as well. Um, it's obviously a great site where as you can hear it's a very busy road, uh, millions of people a year travelling down the strategic A road great amenities with the restaurant the hotel and the coffee as well so this is uh, the first of many similar sites to come uh, this summer so this is building on an existing relationship you can see these chargers have ac as well as dc and they even allow plug-in hybrids to use them so obviously we're at a marston's pub here so uh, tell us about your uh, your relationship with marston and where, where you see that heading yeah, we've worked with Marston's now for over four years, which is quite amazing when you think about um, how niche EV adoption was, you know, before the pandemic. So they've been in for, in for the long haul. Um, we've got 150 charging sites live with them now, um, which is great. And we're, we're, we're currently building nine more hubs like this just with Marston's. So they're a great partner. I think for them, EV charging is a core part of their sustainability strategy. It's they care deeply about. There's, there's lots of retailers who get involved for, for the reasons of footfall or, or or incremental revenue, but I think for Marston's it's a key part of their um, their, their green credentials, which is great. Uh, they, they've got a network of you know, over, over 1,000 pubs. Um, they're buying more restaurants and hotels at the moment. We, we just last week actually launched our first AC charging installation at one of their hotels as well. So um, you know they're a great partner. We work together, and, and you know we, again we couldn't have built this accessible site without their partnership and openness to to trusting us. Uh, and I think the, the the trust is a key part to to them taking on our advice and expertise in what customers want from charging today. This is the hotel attached to the Marsden's Paisley Pair and next time you see it, this parking bay will be a row of seven kilowatt AC chargers. So you can you can grab a pint and a charge, which maybe aren't the right things to mix together, but maybe just one. That's legal, isn't it? So um, so tell us about the specs of the of this charging hub. You know what what kind of kilowatts and what what's the current pricing for it? Obviously that is likely to change in the in the way things are happening. Yeah. So we've got the the Ken Power uh, charge units here, so they can charge up to 150 kilowatts. The smart thing, obviously, with the Ken Power is that whilst we have the the eight chargers here, it's all load balanced together. So all of the smart technology is away with the substation behind the fence uh, which means that if you were to pull in uh, in a Porsche Taycan and I was next to you in a Renault Zoe uh, your charger would take the power that my car's not able to take and would apply it to your vehicle so we're using the power that is available in the smartest way we can and sharing it across the site uh, in, a, in a live dynamic basis so uh, the chem power is obviously from an accessibility perspective a fantastic um, not only is the screen and the card reader very easy to use from a height perspective but critically the the cable management system we can see uh, means that all users can use the can move the cable with just one arm as well. So, you know, real attention to detail on the points that make a site accessible to all. So we're standing in front of the substation that uh, powers all those charges we've just been looking at. I'm Adam Miller from Chief Commercial Officer from ESP. We partner with Osprey to make sure their grid connection process is as simple as it can be. We help save them money and we make sure that they're quicker to market than they would be otherwise. So tell me about what, you know, kind of the, what was involved with getting this installation up and running, you know, what, were there uh, hoops to jump through, you know, what, what, and, and how was that general, generalised out to other locations? So it's quite a complex process getting connected to the grid. Um, it can take many months. So what we do is try and simplify that for customers. We'll do their liaison with the incumbent electricity company, the DNO, the distribution network operator. We'll liaise with them. We'll secure the connection for them. We'll make sure that they've got exactly the right power that they need. 
um, for, the, for the job that they need to do with charging the vehicles. We'll also then take care of the land rights. Now, believe it or not, one of the most difficult things in getting a site like this connected is getting the right land rights in place. You can end up with needing land rights for the DNO, land rights for the EV company, land rights for us as the statutory operator, but also third party land rights. So it can become extremely complex. Um, you'll see some sites with chargers on, covered over with canvas for months. Typically that's because they haven't resolved their land rights. Everything else is ready, everything's connected, but legally we can't power up until the land rights are in place. So we take care of everything that gets you from the point of connection with the grid to the substation and then into the LV cabinet, the low voltage cabinet, which actually powers the chargers. We take care of all of that. So tell us about the specs. How much power can this, uh, this uh, substation deliver? So it's pretty powerful. This is a 1.5 MVA substation. So you could power hundreds of homes from this. Um, typically a very large supermarket would not be drawing this, this amount of power. Um, so it, it chews a lot of power but you, what you really need is high capacity. It doesn't use so much consumption because it's not being pulled all of the time at peak power. So it goes through some really big cycles of usage from very low to very high. But if you need to charge quickly, and if you want to charge up and get your 100 miles in 10 or 15 or 20 minutes, then you need a significant amount of capacity. We were at your Banbury location and we, there was actually a Taycan charging there and as soon as he finished and unplugged, all of the charges went up by about 20 kilowatts <laughs> in output. So um, um, obviously we're, you know, we're, one of the problems and one of the things that people are worried about with um, electric cars is, can I charge, range anxiety. So kind of, kind of um, you know, what are you doing to help that situation? So I think range anxiety is probably a, a thing of the past now. I think most new electric vehicles that are being launched have got an average range over 250 50 miles, which was really the psychological barrier for most people in terms of making that switch. I think in recent years there's been more talk about charging anxiety, um, but what we have you know, in, in today's world and with the launch of sites like this is there, there's a basket of you know, reliable, trusted networks, of which I'm pleased that Osprey is one of the leading ones, uh, where every week there are new hubs like this being launched. So, you know, charging anxiety, going to a site where there isn't a charger free, or it doesn't work, or you can't make payment or can't use it, that's very quickly becoming a thing of the past with the launches like this one today. Another problem that people are worried about is obviously the energy crisis right now. You know, there people have been making comments about, you know, not, not just yourselves, but other uh, uh, very reliable uh, networks are increasing their prices quite quickly. So, um, you know, uh, where do you see that headed? Uh, uh, you know, is, is that going to be a problem? Is that going to delay or even stop the, uh, the drive towards electric vehicles? Look, I think we're, we're all in a, a horrible situation right now with the energy crisis. Clearly, for all of us as, as at our homes, there's a price cap that protects us. Um, you know, commercial businesses like ourselves, we don't have a price cap. So whether you're a charging network or a factory or, or a bakery, you're, you're exposed to the full uh, increases in price that we're seeing today. Um, and of course, we have to pass some of that through to the drivers. I think the, what I take comfort from is that this is a short term problem um, at some point in the next you know, six to 12 months those prices will come back down um, and we look forward to you know reducing our prices when we can procure energy for a cheaper price i think we, we have to be clear there will be more price increases i think nearly every charging network has increased its price at least twice since the start of the year i expect to see more increases again um, before christmas in terms of will it stop the transition i mean the demand for electric vehicles is is so great now there's such a long list of reasons to make the change i don't expect to see any slowdown in the demand for new EVs and indeed on the charging network we're not seeing a slowdown in demand as well um, it, you know of course a year ago there were some great savings to be made uh, when looking at the cost of refueling a petrol or diesel vehicle versus public charging you know those savings may not be there like they were a year ago now but they will come back in time but it's it's going to be a short-term painful situation potentially difficult period for the, for the next year or two but um, a much brighter future after that do you want to tell us about kind 
kind of where where your kind of roadmap is headed over the next couple of years, maybe up, up to the next five years, if you've even thought about that far in advance. Yeah. I mean, the, I think the positive thing is that despite the huge cost that we're taking on now with energy procurement, is we're not slowing down the rollout at all. So our, our vision is to continue building more and more hubs like this. Uh, we've got 300 charge points at the moment, around 325 as of this morning. Uh, we should have 600 in the ground by the end of the year, and then we've got 1,200 will be in the ground by the end of next year. So our growth, we're going to keep doubling and doubling the size of the network. Uh, clearly, we're not the only network growing at that rate. So I think the, the picture is very positive in terms of this huge uh, tidal wave of great charging infrastructure that's going in. Uh, and that will meet the demand of the, the sheer thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of EVs that are coming into the country now. I've been enjoying your charging. I've been charging my car and it's very easy to use. Uh, you know, plug in, just, just, just tap my card um, and excellent experience so um, uh, hopefully we'll be able to roll out some more of these and people will be able to enjoy that experience um, and the, the the great usability of your chargers thanks for for talking to us Ian it's been, no, been a pleasure, pleasure. Um, so uh, if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel